everyone, it's Sherry Carroll here for SimonSaysStamp.com with a gift card idea using some Tim Holtz Sizzix dies. My idea is to create a gift card enclosure. So here I have the tag and book plate die and you can see that there's also a portion that you can't really see through the rubber at the top. So that's the tag and book plate die. And I have my top folded card here and I kind of want to measure up where I want my tag to fit onto my card. So I've put my little magnetic square at the bottom and I've scored and folded two inches up on my piece of paper here and I'll just put that at the bottom part of the little square and I'll run this through my die cut machine. I've die cut my tag and I wanted to show you how this will fit on the card and also the reason why I did my scoring and folding first before running it through my die cut machine. If I were to just use the size of the tag it would be shorter uh, than the actual tag that I have. So by folding my paper first and then cutting I gained a little, about a quarter of an inch, so I can fold that up and it will hold my gift card. The next thing I want to do is to go ahead and pull out my poinsettia die. I've already cut my cardstock, so this is the poinsettia die and it has about three size flowers and a little flower center. So I've used my new Simon Says Stamp cardstock and this is the khaki color, it's the same as the tag, and my card base is the olive. So this is 100 pound card weight. Love it for these types of techniques because it's very, very sturdy. I've cut some extra flowers so I will be able to have flowers and leaves for my poinsettia. I'll be coloring the largest flower with my forest moss, and sorry it's kind of blurry. Um, I'm using my green applicator tool. I keep one green for all green. And so the larger flower is going to be the leaves that sit behind. And I don't know if you've ever noticed how a poinsettia is. It's all the same color and actually the leaves are part of the blossom itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my applicator tool and add some color onto this khaki cardstock. I always tend to start off gently in the beginning and I'm just making sure I get the darkest color in between the leaves and then I'll go back in and add deeper color as I go. For the blossom portion of my poinsettia I'll be using Barn Door Distress Ink and I have my red applicator tool here and I'll just be going in between just like I did with the leaves getting the darkest color on the edges and once I'm happy with that color I can go ahead and go in and darken. I'll be using the gathered twigs to add a little bit of brown to the color and also it'll help darken up everything. And I have my brown applicator and I use one brown for all brown. And again I'm just going to go onto the edges first and pretty much just color one side of each of the leaves. And I'll also be using that little portion that's kind of cut off. Uh, I'll be cutting that down to use it as one of my leaves as well. So just kind of edging this off, giving it a little bit more depth and a little more warmth. I'm also using the gathered twigs for the blossom portion of my flower and just getting the edges. It's also darkening up the color of the red just really nicely. And I'll be doing this to both of the sizes of the poinsettia flower. I want to add a little bit of yellow to my flower center. So here I have my Wild Honey Distress Ink and my yellow ink applicator. And I'll just go ahead and start adding some yellow to blend in with the red. And now I'm ready to do some stamping and I have the Tim Holtz Papillon set here. And I'll just be using this on the plastic. And I'm also using the Dark Chocolate Simon Says Stamp ink, the brand new ink. Love this stuff. So I'll go ahead and ink up the entire script portion of the stamp set. And once I'm ready, I can go ahead and flip over my leaves and flowers and just go ahead and press them onto the the rubber there and use a piece of paper and press that down in so that gives a really nice impression. Go ahead and flip this up and show you. So it's just beautiful with those colors and now I'll just do one of my little flowers and then I'll continue on and stamp the rest of my pieces. I wanted to try something different with my glitter. So here I have the glue and seal from Ranger and I've temporarily affixed my leaves and flowers onto a scrap piece of paper so I'm just spreading this glue around and it is pulling the color just slightly, but not, not too much to worry about. So my main goal here is just to get the glue down onto the flowers. While the glue is still wet, I'll go ahead and sprinkle on some of my Rock Candy Distress Glitter. And for my little flower center, I'll be using the Antique Linen Distress Glitter. 
While my flowers are drying, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my cardstock. So here I have the Simon Says Stamp Olive Ink and my olive cardstock. And again, I'm using the Papillon Stamp Set from Tim Holtz, and I'm only inking up one side of it. I am just going to be stamping on the left portion of my note card, so I don't need to ink up the entire piece. So once I have that inked up, I'll go ahead and line this up. So make sure I'm just to the edge of where I ink that and I'll lay that down onto that rubber and go ahead and use my scrap piece of paper here and press that right down and this will give me a really nice impression once again. For my tag I'm using the Grunge Snowflakes, also Tim Holtz, and I'm using the khaki ink which goes really perfectly with the khaki cardstock. So I'll just be stamping a couple of the snowflakes, go ahead and ink that up and determine where I want it and go ahead and press it onto my tag. I'll re-ink and add a couple more snowflakes. And as time goes, these inks will soak into the paper and lighten up really nicely. Next, I'll be using my tiny attacher and putting a staple on each side to securely hold my gift card. So my flower is all dry, and now I'll just be doing a little bit of dimensional work to it by bending those little petals back a little bit. It gives it a nice natural look. I've secured the entire piece together in the center with glossy accents and then I used some of my foam pieces to give it a little bit of a lift. I used a piece of the Tim Holtz linen ribbon for the top portion and just tied that in a simple knot at the top. And I'll be adhering this to the card by using a few foam squares. So now I can slip in a preloaded gift card and sign the inside and it's ready to go. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial using the Tim Holtz Sizzix dies for December and thanks for watching.